Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday evening, September 1st. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Looking out across the Atlantic today, we are nearing the very peak of the hurricane season climatologically, so there are many areas of disturbed weather. We have Tropical Depression 15 off the eastern seaboard. This is moving northeastward, likely to remain rather weak as it moves along this old frontal boundary and is not a threat to land, so we're not going to spend much time on that today. And if we look in the eastern Atlantic, we have a very strong monsoon trough at the moment, lots of easterly wind and westerly wind. Uh, generating this large area of broad spin and within that we have a couple of waves that will probably bear watching over the next few days and have potential for development but they're not moving westward very quickly and so we're not expecting any threat to the lesser antilles or anything imminently but we may be discussing these waves more as time goes on this week and next week what we're going to spend most of our time on today is on newly formed tropical storm Nana, which has moved south of Jamaica, cruising through the Caribbean on a nearly due west track during the last couple of days. Here's the close invisible shot showing the system scooting very quickly off toward the west with a forward speed of about 18 miles per hour, so it's really cruising here. And you can't really see the low-level center very well here, but it's likely somewhere in this region. Difficult to pin down. We weren't even sure it had a closed center until a recon plane went in there this morning and certainly found one. This was the plane's observations from earlier in the day. And what it found was a very, very tight little circulation here south of Jamaica at the time. Very tight and strong wind with it, about 50 mile per hour winds at a maximum, if not a little bit higher, observed from the plane and a pressure of 1,004. This is a very tiny little core here, and what these tiny circulations usually tell you is that they're volatile in the sense that they can undergo quick intensity changes both up and down. They're fragile, so they can be easily destroyed, but since they're small, they can easily spin quicker as well. And so that volatility leads to some uncertainty in the intensity forecast. But what we can say right now is that the system has some imperfections. And by that, I mean, one, it's moving very quickly to the west. So it's very difficult to get the southern side going in any meaningful way. Number two is that it's a little bit tilted with height. There is some easterly shear here. You can make out some of these milky white clouds being pushed off toward the west, and this is resulting in a mid-level center that might be actually more up here, with the low-level center more in here. Hard to tell for sure, but that's kind of how it looks on the visible floater today. And we're also seeing that the convection is not explosive near the low-level center. We've had a new burst a little off to the west just at the end of this loop today, but we've not had a lot of thunderstorm activity here. And this indicates that we're probably not seeing rapid intensification of the circulation at the moment, but we will need a later recon plane to go in and find out because it's very hard to tell when these things are this small. So going forward, though, will this have a chance to intensify more? It's very possible, but if we look at the larger picture here, we are dealing with a water vapor satellite picture that shows, again, this very brisk easterly flow aloft. In general, all these cirrus clouds are streaming out of the northeast or the easterly direction. You can see that even to the west of the storm as well. This is a little bit faster than the low-level flow that is currently moving the storm toward the west. So there is, again, some shear here. And you can see this in the GFS Vortex averaged sounding around the wave that is showing that the low-level flow here is a little bit lighter out of the east than is the upper-level flow above 500 millibars or so, which is very brisk at about 30 knots out of the east or northeast. So there is a shear here that is about of moderate intensity. Will this change during the next day or two? Well, it actually may change, but it may only change in direction because what we have is a upper level low that is currently diving southwestward out of the Turks and Caicos region. And this is going to end up near and north of Nana as the storm moves westward. And so when this upper low is here, what's actually gonna happen is the northerly flow on its western side may actually impinge upon the storm a northerly directed shear instead of an easterly directed shear. We can see this on the GFS upper level wind forecast in 24 hours from this morning, so valid tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, there is Nana off the northeast coast of Honduras on the GFS, and there's our upper low moving into the Northwest Caribbean. And again, the uh, northerly flow on this west side beginning to turn the upper level flow out of the north on the model. And this actually continues all the way until an eventual landfall of Nana on the coast of Belize on the model. There's the upper low right next to it. 
This is not an optimal configuration of the flow aloft. The shear is not necessarily fatal to the storm, but it's definitely strong. Not only this, but it's rather deep. This upper level flow here is not confined to the outflow layer. Rather, if we look at the vortex average sounding from the GFS valid for Wednesday morning, we find that all the way down to about 400 millibars, we have this northerly component to the environmental flow, whereas the low level flow is out of the east. So the depth over which the shear is occurring suggests that it's likely to be highly disruptive to the convective pattern. And what, what, I, what I would expect here is for eventually this convection to start taking a dive more toward the south side of the vortex. So that as the low level center continues toward Belize, we start to see most of the convective activity focused on the south side. And we could see rather large vortex tilt here and that shear may prevent a lot of intensification of Nana, but it's going to be a little difficult to predict with confidence because these small circulations, you might remember Tropical Storm Marco, Hurricane Marco in the Gulf just a week or two ago, those small circulations can be difficult to predict when they're going to succumb to the shear and weaken instead of strengthen. So I would expect this to keep a bit of a lid on Nana, but it is possible that it gets a little bit of intensity and could approach hurricane strength as it nears the coast of Belize. It's also worth noting here that when that shear starts pushing out of the northerly direction, that small circulation may get nudged a little bit toward the south because of the shear putting all of the thunderstorm activity on the south side. So we could also see an unexpected little dip in the track toward the coast of Honduras right at the end. It's possible, so keep an eye out for that. The good news is that the circulation is small, so as far as wind impacts and high surf, likely to be limited close to the center of circulation uh, without wind impacts spreading over a wide area. But for that reason, the landfall point, of course, will be very important for Belize, Honduras, and Guatemala. But of course, rainfall, probably the primary impact across this region of Central America is that will occur regardless of the maximum winds as this moves ashore. This is the current forecast track from the NHC showing that westward motion again quite brisk. This will be near the coast by Thursday morning. So this is coming into the coastline quickly. They do currently forecast hurricane intensity here. For now, only tropical storm watches are up for the coasts of Belize. Uh, Guatemala and Honduras, uh, we could see hurricane watches there soon. And again, whether it's actually hurricane intensity here, I do expect there are some obstacles in the way. So it wouldn't be surprising to see a storm that doesn't quite get to hurricane intensity, but winds of at least 50 miles per hour seem likely here, which is what it currently has, and winds as high as 75 miles per hour are possible if it does reach hurricane intensity. So keep an eye on that, but again, heavy rain uh, potentially causing flash flooding could end up being a bigger issue over the wider region as strong winds are likely to, to be confined to a tiny area near the center of the storm. You can see that area of strong wind in orange here. It doesn't seem likely to grow very much over the next day or two. So only a small area of max wind with this as it moves into Central America. So stay tuned to the NHC for the latest updates. That's it for today. I may have another video update tomorrow. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.